God's word for today devotional. And let me read to you Acts chapter 26, verse 1 to 8, which will be the text or the verses that we are going to learn some biblical principles to live by, especially for today. So Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa, I am going to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews, especially because you are familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, spent from the beginning among my own nation and in J Jerusalem, is known by all the Jews. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify that according to the strictest party of our religion, I have lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial because of my hope in the promise made by God to our fathers, to which our 12 tribes hope to attend, as they earnestly worship night and day. And for this hope, I am accused by Jews. O King, why is it thought incredible by any of you? that God raises the dead. Now, Paul had again another opportunity to testify. And in this case, he was before King Agrippa. And he found this very fortunate. Now, this is the third time he proclaimed his testimony. Earlier, he testified to the same um, accusation before the court of the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem and before Festus here in Caesarea Maritima. So this is the third time. And again, Paul's previous manner of life was known according to him because he was not just a Pharisee. He was one of the strictest and most religious who practiced it. He, he championed being a Pharisee. We know that because he wrote in Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 to 6 to the church of Philippi, and this was what he said. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. In other words, Paul has embraced the, the religion of the Pharisees unreservedly and jealously. As a proof of his zeal, he said here he persecuted the church. He ran after to those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And what was the reason why he was a persecutor? Why he was so zealous about persecuting the Christians? Later, he explained to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to 16. Let me read this. He said to Timothy, I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appoint me, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of all acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. 
Now, Paul mentioned to Timothy that although he was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent or arrogant opponent of Christianity, he received mercy because he acted ignorantly in unbelief. Paul knew that his heart was sincere before his conversion. He was sincere, but sincerely wrong. He was sincere to his religion. He was sincere that what he did in killing and persecuting the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ was the right thing for him to do because he believed a lie. He was deceived to think that that was right. Also himself, that with this, he saw himself that he sinned ignorantly before God until God poured out his mercy upon him. But he received mercy in spite of this. Now, the Old Testament law has distinguished between intentional and intentional sins in Numbers 15, verse 22 to 31. Evidently here, when Paul said this to Timothy, that he acted in unbelief, but he obtained mercy, Paul did not deserve God's mercy. God provided his mercy to him with nothing good he could give to God or with nothing good that God could receive or obtain from his life. When in fact, he was a persecutor. He was an enemy of the people of God. So what does this mean to us for today? It means that it, it is only out of God's mercy alone that, like Paul, we will know Jesus and obtain that hope. Paul did not know that the hope that he can only have is only through Jesus until the Lord Jesus Christ revealed himself to him. And this hope is the fulfillment in the promise made by God to the fathers to which the 12 tribes hope to attain, which they worship day and night with the hope, which they, um, in the, the, um, they wanted to, to, to receive by their, by their religiosity, by their faithfulness and rigid um, religion. But these leaders cannot receive this hope or they wouldn't have this hope. Why? Because they won't accept Jesus as the Messiah. They continue to refuse to believe on Jesus. So like Paul, before Paul was converted, they were sincerely wrong. They were sincere, no doubt about it, but they were wrong. If God won't open their eyes, they would not see the truth until and unless that would happen, that God will open their eyes they will never see the truth. They will, they will be groping in the dark. And that's the sad state of everyone who is an unbeliever because their eyes are blinded. According, according to Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, that the God of this world has blinded the eyes of people, of the unbelievers, that they will not see the light of the gospel. In the gospels, especially in John chapter 8, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him. Remember, there were, there were many Jews who did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but there were others also who believed him. So he said to those who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Means that if you receive me, believe my claims, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth. Belief will lead us to understand the truth. And this truth will set us free. John chapter 8, verse 32. So it all starts with belief. When Paul believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, his eyes were open. Her eyes saw everything. That he was deceived. He believed a lie. And it changed his life 180 degrees. He became a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has this hope. He was persecuted for this hope. He was willing to die because of this hope. He was willing to suffer from the hands 
of the people who were considered his camp before, the re religious leaders. He was one among them. But now he became their topmost enemy because he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he didn't care whether he's going to suffer because he knew that this was the right path. The knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ when he believed upon Jesus. So it's really an interesting thing to note how Paul had changed completely because he met the Lord Jesus Christ personally. How about you? I hope today that when you met the Lord Jesus Christ, your eyes are open, your eyes see the, the truth, and then you are now free and you have the hope, hope eternal. And that is our encouragement this morning. And even Paul wrote later in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus is our hope. He was crucified, buried, he rose again. He rose up into heaven and he's coming back. He is our hope. May God bless us. Father, thank you so much for this testimony of Paul that was accused because of the hope in Christ. I pray the Father that we have also that certainty and hope that we expect that what you claim, what you said, that whatever we, we, we see in the, in the scriptures, that Jesus who died at the cross, was buried, rose again, went up to heaven, is coming back. And that is our hope, Lord. Thank you that we have this hope as our anchor in this world, darkened world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.